so now let us move on to our next topic that is optical resonator so to know optical resonator first we have to know the necessity of a optical resonator so a large number of excited atoms emit photons spontaneously in various directions when each of these spontaneous photons will trigger many stimulated emission along the direction of propagation the stimulated photons also travel in the different directions thus these photons cannot give coherent amplification that we i have already explained that coherent amplification is a necessary condition for laser production since it is scattering in uh, different directions coherent amplification is not taking place of light so the number of photon must be restricted to achieve a coherent laser radiations so this is the necessity of having a optical resonator how does it looks it looks like this here i have a box consider it as a box inside which the laser material is present in one side it is 100% reflecting plane mirror and in the other side it is semi transparent plane mirror so it resonates uh, i think you know the meaning of resonance from shm that we have already discussed previously it reflects again and again and it attains a standing wave position and 90% of it gets reflected again and again since it attains more energy and finally 10% of it gets emerged out as laser radiation this cavity inside the box is known as the resonant cavity if by this process enough population inversion occurs in the laser material substantial light amplification takes place with ease passage light is reflected several times between the mirrors and gains strength in each passage finally a steady intense laser beam that i have represented as the emergent ray emerges from the position that is blank so how can we define an optical resonator an optical resonator formed by two mirrors at the two ends of a laser material is a device that directs the photons back and forth through the laser medium and the number of photons get multiplied by stimulated emission to achieve a coherent laser radiations so this is the basic definition of an optical resonator and this is the basic diagram now let us move on to the last topic that is types of laser here we will study two types of laser one solid and one gaseous in solid we will study about ruby laser shortly and in gas laser we will study about helium neon laser very shortly first let us see the types of lasers those are solid state lasers gas lasers liquid state or liquid dye lasers and semiconductor lasers in our syllabus we only have solid state lasers and gas state lasers first beginning with the solid state laser we will study what is uh, uh, ruby lasers and the working of it so this is how the ruby laser roughly looks this is the glass tube outlines inside this i have marked with red this is the ruby rod this one is the ruby rod the main content of this type of laser this surface is partially silvered mirror this is the light shield this surface from here the emergent laser beam emerges these are xenon flash lamps it's like a ring and here we have to produce high voltage so this is the rough schematic arrangement of a ruby laser that is classified under the solid laser so a ruby laser is a solid state laser it consists of a pink ruby crystals that is cylindrical in nature or cylindrical rod of pink ruby crystal whose ends are optically flat and parallel that is these two ends one end of the ruby rod is fully silvered see i have mentioned here partially silvered and this one is fully silvered and the other end is partially that is 50% silver the rod is surrounded by a high intensity helical flash lamp 
this is the helical flash lamp this go around like this filled with xenon gas which provides sufficient light to produce population inversion so it is stimulated emission and the xenon flash lamp provides sufficient light for population inversion activity so you all know the basic laser formation or the basic principle behind lasing actions so that is similar in all the cases just the apparatus are different so by this xenon lamp, flash lamp light is incident on this ruby crystals then the stimulated transition or the population inversion takes place so this acts as a pumping method and hence by the former formerly discussed methods the laser lights are emitted from these light shield surfaces so that is how the solid state laser that is the ruby laser works in real life now the second type and the last type of laser we will study is gas lasers under which we will specifically concentrate on helium neon lasers so this is the schematic representation of a helium neon laser so it consists of a mixture of helium and neon in a ratio of about 10 is to 1 so the ratio of helium is to neon is 10 is to 1 inside a long narrow discharge tube at a pressure of 1 millimeter that is pressure equal to 1 millimeter of mercury the gas system is placed between a pair of meters that is one this one and the second is this one or a pair of convex meters among which one is perfectly reflector while the other is a partial reflector so that a resonator system is formed that is required by every laser system to emit laser lights the energy may be coupled by the resonator system the distance between the mirrors is equal to an integral multiple of half wavelength of the laser light and supports standing wave pattern within the resonator system again the formation of laser or lasing action is the previous one just like i have defined it as in the starting of this section that is laser section so it is not required to write again in the examination if this question comes just you have need to draw the diagram and define the lasing action with this replacing the ruby crystal with the helium neon crystals so the helium neon gas acts as the lasing material or the laser material that is how the helium neon laser works so now we will see uses of helium neon laser where it is used number one it can be used in interferometry that is studying of interferometry number two it can be used as or in laser printers or laser printing devices number three it is used in barcode readers number four it is used for target fixing or aiming in guns and there are more uses of helium neon laser now let us shortly discuss the advantages of gas laser that is we have studied helium neon laser in comparison to solid state laser that is ruby laser so number one is gas lasers specifically helium neon lasers have higher degree of monochromaticity and directionality so monochromaticity is higher and number two is gas lasers can 
operate continuously without cooling unlike ruby lasers or solid lasers which required cooling in specific interval of time so the last topic and a very important one is the applications of laser so where laser can be application cut start so where lasers are applicable it is applicable in our daily lives such as in radio communication from outer space in application of holography to investigate the basic laws of interaction of atoms and molecules with electromagnetic waves of higher intensity to pierce hole in hard materials for operation purposes and etc there are many other uses of laser lights in our daily applications so with this we have come to the end of this topic that is the second portion of module 3 that is lasers in the next videos we will be continuing module 3 with holography thank you